Hello and welcome back. We're going into hour number two here of week eight of Roleplay R&D Numenera. Steven, what's going on? So bleak. I almost said Adam really bad, by the way, that I had to... Anyways. Didn't you call him Steven once or yeah, something I, like I that? Yeah, and I called Neil Adam or Steven during yep, Solemn the other day. Awesome. It's it's fucked. We're, we are eventually going to meet up at like PAX East and our powers are going to combine. We'll become the Ur-DM. Yeah. Oh, snap. That's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Go. It's going to shatter the earth and sunder the world. Farewell. And let all of the monsters in the middle of it out onto the surface as they were a thousand years ago. That's exactly. what's going to happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Bleen. Yep. You decided that all of this was fucking bullshit and you were going to go meditate. Yep. Tell me about that. Yeah. Where are I, you uh... meditating? Do you, like, do you like go to the dojo? Do you like go back to Nicodemus's house? Like, where uh... are you? It, I just find somewhere that that would seem peaceful, whether it's uh, you know like the side of the road where not too many cars are passing by, or mm. or somewhere. And I and I um, I chant the uh, the sacred chant of uh, Cthulhu. Are you trying to find somewhere like um, natural or somewhere like maybe man-made but more enclosed? Um, I would say probably more natural, open to the elements. Mm-hmm. Wherever that's at. Okay, so um pretty close to the dojo, uh in the sort of southeast of town, there's a rise where um like I guess when you look at it, it's kinda like a park that was a park a while ago, but maybe whoever was maintaining it decided that they didn't have time for it or, you know, they passed away. And anyway, like the town of Jericho's Ridge doesn't really have like a civic society that takes care of the town. It's kind of whatever the the civilians decide to do. So this place has kind of gone to seed. There's like tall grasses growing up all along this hill. And you can see um, a, a good portion of the little village from just about any angle from on top of here. But it's its own little secluded sort of section of quiet. You find a position up against a a, a strong piece of like uh, incredibly dark rock that's just thrust up out of the ground here, and there's a uh, a small white blossom down below it. And um, you sit down, cross your legs, and and begin chanting the mantra of Cthulhu. It's actually just Kumbaya, but you know, people. It's been a billion years, so it's right. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, become something incredibly Kumbaya sacred. Right now? Yeah, I just kind of like go like this and I'm just kind of like uh what's it uh St Stevie Wonder in it where I'm just like head bobbing back and forth inwards singing kumbaya. Yeah. Humming yeah. it not I have singing, to turn on the stream it. now so I can see you JP's head yeah. bobbing. Cuz <laughs> feel free. Feel free. We actually don't we don't get the glory. Yeah, that, Skype's a fucking gigantic get. piece of shit. So I'm sorry about that. So um you sit there opening your mind to the world and uh, meditating on the tenets of Cthulhu. And you feel this breeze go... <laughs> and uh, Did you I know... Fart or something? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> you know that, that someone has joined you on top of this hill. Okay. I, I, do you open I, your I, eyes? Uh, or do you just like sit there and wait? Yeah, I, no, I sit there and wait. It's one of the tenets is patience. Okay, excellent. Um, you hear a voice say... Bleen, I can be just as patient as you. Do I recognize this voice? Yes. It is, um, it is Vex's second in command, Sin Sin. <laughs> okay. I like raise one eye open, and, and what do I see in front of me? You see a man in a black gi standing there with a staff out to his side and he's standing in like an active battle stance so he's got like one hand out towards you and his staff out to the side and the two ends of his staff are like uh crackling with uh, they're, they're almost like plasma globes on the end of his staff okay and they're crackling uh yeah with one eye open i i stare at him I'm just like what what do you need i'm meditating and he says um clearly you heard the chants <laughs> He says, meditation is valuable at times, but Cthulhu also teaches the value of action. And he just like leaps towards you with his staff up above his head, you know, ready to strike it down in your direction. What do you do? Uh, uh, am I on a rock? What am I on? Your back is to a rock that's like thrust angled away from you, like probably 15 or 20 feet 
up in the sky. And so I would assume I'm sitting like uh, Indian style or, or cross-legged mm -hmm. style or something like yeah. that. I want to, with my tentacle, push myself up off the ground like a foot or two and then kick the rock behind me and jump out of the way. Uh, like awesome. towards him across the, like, sorry, through him, I guess is basically what I'm trying yeah. to say. Are you, are you going to try to hit him as you go past? No, I'm simply evading, not, uh, not trying to strike. All right, cool. Go ahead and give me a, um, a, uh, speed defense roll. Okay. It's just a oh, D 20 against my speed, right? Yeah. Uh, what is my speed? Oh, it's not against your speed. Sorry. It's just a D 20. And oh. then, like you could, you could spend points from your speed pool in order to reduce the difficulty of this task. That kind of thing. I just rolled a 13. thirteen. Okay, it's close. Like the end of this staff comes crushing down straight towards your head as he falls through the air, and you thrust yourself up off the ground, and then you launch yourself away, sort of like directly parallel to his motion, but in the opposite direction. And um, you feel like the heat from this staff of his, as it sears past your as, uh, cheek as i do that i say mm -hmm. uh lightning flash silly rabbit that's what i say <laughs> <laughs> um he lands at the base of this rock and the entire rock just like cracks there's a huge <clears throat> as like a, a split just rends up the side of this rock and he turns around as you land and he says um silly platitudes will get you nowhere bleen the school is mine <laughs> <laughs> uh i like I, I guess i i since i'm either hunched over or somewhere on the ground i like crack all my knuckles and like crack my neck and mm -hmm. uh, like take the sock off of my my tentacle Ooh. and then uh i do as any dragon ball z character would do i just start like slowly like uh screaming and and quietly mm -hmm. screaming and then it gets louder and louder and hopefully things around me start to pick up off the ground and yeah I just absolutely <laughs> yeah um, and he just like he just stares you down, and he places the staff directly in front of him. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I would like to. Um, I would like to activate muscles of iron for two might. Okay. Mm -hmm. Damn. Uh, let me just mark that off somewhere. Uh, and then we're gonna do. Uh, the the best uh what is it streets of rage mike hagger uh just the clothesline you know that's the yeah, signature okay. move cool so you just go like running for toward towards him arm stretched out ah well yeah with the tentacle with the tentacle yeah Tent tentacle arm okay so you go dashing forwards like all of the rocks like shoot up from the ground as you dash forwards with like the strength of your your legs as they pound the earth um Give me a, uh, a a might attack. Okay, and if I if I can, I'd like to use edge here. How much does that cost? Sure, one? It's, it costs three points, but I think you have edge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, I have one edge, so it's cost. two. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so just a straight D twenty, and the, all it does mm -hmm. is okay. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Snap. Okay. Snap. Um, he Can like, I re-roll last... that? Is there any pedal? God damn it! Can you I can use XP? You have XP? Do I have three XP. XP. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, be safe. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what was about to happen? You saw like the twitch of his pinky finger on his right hand, which is down lower on the shaft of the uh, staff that he's holding, and you saw it like just clench just a little bit. Like camera zooms really in, and like his hand just like tightens minusculely. And I believe sweeps. that actually JP could feel the clenching of his anus even before <laughs> the pinky, and he felt that slight. Pressure yeah. change in the air. Yeah, that's, definitely. It was that's that the loud. Super close Saiyan. Up, close up of the hair on his tentacle go like. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what knows. happens is he sweeps this staff up, like hoping to connect directly with your ball sack, but you have done like a pirouette, almost like a football player. Little does he and, know that also the mutations have removed said ball sack from my body. <laughs> Anyway, and and you you just like spin pirouette and then like slap him on the back of the head with your tentacle. Uh, roll your damage. Uh oh god, what is it again? Is it? Uh god, you're you're a complicated one. You're like medium, so it's so medium four is seven plus... damage. Second roll is four speed damage for the tentacle, so I think it's seven. So is it D seven? Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think that's about right because it was like four plus three for being something super badass, and then you would get a, a second speed attack. Yep. So the make first a, one successful or something. Yeah. Like that. So the first one was because that was your seventeen. So go so, ahead and roll the. Oh no, you you deal seven damage. Okay. Oh, I just flat deal seven damage. Yeah, for hitting you don't. You okay, don't then I roll a second d twenty. Yes, roll a second d twenty. Nineteen. <laughs> oh damn, dude. Okay. <laughs> And then it does four speed damage. Okay, so you just like slap the shit out of this guy. <laughs> Do you deliver any quips while, um, you know, while this is happening? Uh, I say, uh, <laughs> I say, stamp stampeding bison, strong rhino. <laughs> um, okay, he roars and he pulls out a dagger. Um, and you can see that the dagger is smeared in some kind of resinous substance. Um, and he charges at you. And oh, let's go find out what's... Is the 19 a crit, by the way? Uh, no, but it does something special. Yes, you're right. Thank you for reminding me. Um, let's see. Combat part one. It's it, not It does on like a, sti a stinging tendril or something, right? And then I think the 17 is also plus one, right? 17, 18, 19, 20 are all... Yes, no, the 17, 17 gives you plus one damage. Um, 18. 18 is plus 2 damage, 19 is plus 3 damage or a minor effect, and 20 is plus 4 damage. So here's the basic mechanics. So in the middle there in the special rolls is 19 plus 3 damage or minor effect, and the minor effects are immediately to the right of that. So do you want to do any of those? Uh, minor effects, ignore... Uh, yeah, I want to ignore armor. Okay, awesome. So you dealt one extra damage with that. So like... Um, He's not wearing any armor, but you can tell that he's, like, through the mastery of Cthulhu, he has trained his skin to be impervious to many strikes and attacks. And um, because of your intimate knowledge of Cthulhu, you know just, like, the right frequency to vibrate your tendril at, such that it completely ignores the, uh, the mental hardening of his skin. So, so he took 12 damage, ignoring armor, or, yep. or 8 damage with 4 damage on top that ignored armor. That's the one. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it, it, it turned out to be 12 damage, ignoring our total. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this guy like pulls out this knife that's coated in this resinous substance uh, and he just charges at you. And now I want to find out what's going on with AAA. So um, AAA, you, you feel like um, this, this cold breeze blow past you as you're sitting uh, over uh, across the fountain from this house. Um, you don't you don't see anything right away, but then as you sit for a moment, you you start hearing like a tinkling sound, like of of like glass, like continually breaking. What do you do? Mm. Can I hear where the glass is, like the direction of the glass is breaking? Yeah, it sounds like it's coming from like behind the fountain, over All across right. across the the clearing from you. All right, I'm gonna get close enough to where I can see it. Okay, so you, you go sort of like march towards the fountain in order to try to look around it, and you actually notice that this sound is actually coming directly from the fountain. And when you're close enough to it, you see that the topmost sort of uh, fountain, you know, segment that's spewing water is now actually pushing out sort of this like soft serve uh, frozen liquid Gross. that's like all sorts of like crystalline I'm gonna you know, ice crystals. I'm going to pick up my visor and uh, start scanning it. Okay. Um, you don't get any sense of the Numenera, but um, you do get a sense of some kind of external influence on it. It feels like uh, this this liquid, this water, has clearly had its state changed forcibly. There's no natural action at work here. Um, and as you watch, like, the rest of the water in this fountain starts freezing over and starts, you know, crystallizing. Hmm. All right, so it's just water, and it's just turning into ice? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kind of, like, close my visor to back down, and then I'm going to look around to see if I see anyone nearby. Hmm. Give me an intellect roll. And if you have any, like, training in perception or anything like that, um, give me that, too. I uh, don't. No. Okay. Well, I do have training in... Numenara, could that help? Probably not, not in this 
not in this circumstance. Okay. Oh, but you catch um, on wow. the right hand window of the house that you were peering at earlier, the curtain immediately like drifts back closed as if there was someone who was looking out and you catch the faint glimpse of an eye. Mm. Mm. All right. Uh, I guess I'm just going to like go over there and knock on the door. Okay. <laughs> you, you stride over and you knock on the door. Bam, 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 bam. Um, you hear a voice from inside saying, Come in. Mm. I slowly tur turn the doorknob and open the door, but don't step in. Okay, you turn the doorknob, you push the door open, and it just a chill blast of air comes rushing out of this uh, of this sort of underground cavernous abode. It looks like a really nice home inside. There's like wooden mahogany paneling on all of the walls and there's like a nice chandelier in the entryway. Um, it's There's no light, everything is dark. Um, and you hear a voice from, from deep back inside, maybe even downstairs or something like that saying, please, please come in, do come in. This is uh, uh, a little weird. I don't know if I want to go into your house without... Why don't you come up this way? Uh, the voice says, I'm preparing a meal. I can't come to the front door. My hands are occupied. That is a right. dead man. That is a dead man inside, and this That's dude creepy. is about to eat him and his pet. <laughs> you're going to be a dessert. Uh, don't you do it, don't you do it, girl. Does, is my Susky acting weird or like... Oh, he, he is like behind you and like... Uh -oh. He's creeped out. Yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps I'll come back later when you're not cooking a meal. I'd hate to interrupt you. Um, okay. Uh, he, he says... No, it's really no problem. It's just chicken, you know. It's 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 a uh, dangerous material to sanitation. Really, come downstairs. I close the door. <laughs> okay, you close the door. Um, do you like run or are you just like backing away? What I'm is your gonna, what's your reaction? I'm not running. I'm just okay. kind of like what just happened. I'm not okay. gonna go in there. Um. um as you stand there, like you close the door, you like look down at Chomper and he's like, <gasps> he's starting to relax a little bit. And then all of a sudden he goes, yipe, as there's a huge thump against the door and just like crystals of ice shatter all over the front of the door. And you hear this thump again, wham. What do you do? So there's just like ice going everywhere. Yeah, so like doors closed in front of you, something slammed into it and created this huge thump and ice spread out all on the outside of the door. Uh, and it just like, when it was hit a second time, the ice was like shattered out, showering you in a rain of ice crystals. They're um, not sharp or anything, it's just, you know, ice. Can I use my hedge magic to try to reopen the door, but, but like not stand next to it? Oh yeah, totally. I, okay. Um, okay, so you like go step off to the side. Are you on the right or the left? The one with the window that's open. Okay, so that's the right. So you head off to the right. Um, the, the thing inside slams against the door again, and you use your hedge magic to turn the doorknob, and uh, the door opens inward. Um, where is Chomper? He's on my side, probably okay. hiding behind me because he's scared. <laughs> so there's like regular slamming, like slam, ice, slam, Slam! And then you open the door, and let's go find out what happens with uh, Pocket and Oh, me. come on. I want to see Ah, this. cliffhangers. <laughs> multiple cliffhangers. <laughs> so, uh, Pocket, this 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 Jimes guy, he, he just, like, strides to the back door of the house, and he just, like, throws it open. He says, Jane, is everything okay? What is the relationship between the kitchen and the back door of the house? Uh, like, if the kitchen is, like here then there's a hallway that runs right next to it mm. and the back door is like entering that hallway and then in a, an immediate turn will bring this guy into the kitchen okay uh let's um <clears throat> all right i'm going to uh uh p I'm, I'm gonna pick up the the tea and mm -hmm. hold it in front of my mouth 
and get as close as humanly possible and be like, everything is fine. <laughs> to her. Yeah. Let's like, say it. Are you are you uh, using like intimidation or something like that? Uh, I am. Yeah, but I'm not being threatening. Like I'm just being very like everything is fine. Uh, Don't mm-hmm. Say anything. Give me a uh, give me an intellect roll. Uh, I can do that. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> is that gonna no work or do I need to re-roll me. that? Because I want to re-roll. Everything is fine. I will uh, re-roll if I need to. No, th- this works actually. She she sort of shakily calls out, "Jimes, ev- ev- everything's fine. I just I-, I burned myself on the tea. That's all." And he oh, says, uh, "Oh, um, all right. Well, you know, uh, I'm gonna need some help plucking this chickens. So you know, when you're done with the tea, maybe you could come give me a hand." Someone outside said, "I'd love to help you." <laughs> May we wake up. I, I mean, I follow him to the door. And okay. so you would hear that and you would say, I'll I, help I, you pluck the chickens. <laughs> Jane says, Jimes, is, is there someone with you? And Jimes says, yeah, there's uh, some woman came around the house. She's, uh, she's pretty nice. We should invite her to the, uh, to the barbecue. What do you think? Are you asking me? Oh, no, I love, I'm asking Jane. You're asking Come yourself, on, guys. You're asking <laughs> I know. I, I'm yourself, like, Steven. I, what? I, Steven's like waiting. GM's while, like, like trolling me now. I was just really into the scene. Uh, she, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, whatever. Uh, and Jimes goes back outside, closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you do, Pocket? I, uh, I, I I put the tea down. I'm like, no, actually, nah, screw it. I'm not going to drink the tea. No chances. Zero chances. I, I put the tea down. Smart. And I go, I go, I, I, I simply nod at her and I'm like, good. Now, where were we? I'm like, oh, yes. You're a liar. Hermits for weapons. I'm not a liar. I am telling you the truth. Let, then let's go, let's go see those weapons, shall we? Yeah, um, she she says, uh, uh, all right. And then she leads you um, out, out of the kitchen to a, a curving spiral staircase that follows the, cor- the outside of this, uh, of this like chimney stack, this brickwork chimney stack. Uh, she leads you up to the second story where there's like a nice sitting room, a fireplace. And over in the corner, there's like a, a glass cabinet with like uh, oak paneling. Um, and inside, there's like a long uh, shaft with like a blade carved out of crystal, and on a shelf there rests like a small uh, cylinder um, with like gold filigree all around it. Um, and she goes over to it and she she says, "Well, here here they are." Hmm. And she's, can she's I, standing can I use, right next to it. Is there any? Uh, shoot, I, I assume I assume. None of these weapons would have been. None of them can make ice damage. I guess is what I'm asking. I assume. Well, like, you would have to examine them more closely to determine that. All right. Uh, or I could just. Can I interrogate her and be like, "Do any of these do ice damage?" Absolutely. Can I, can I do that yep. instead? Can I roll on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead and give yourself a roll. Come on, something better than a ten. I'll take it. All right. Um. She says, no, no, none of them do ice damage. No, we use this one for lighting our bonfires, and that one's just a, a pole arm that my husband used back in his days of adventuring. It was his weapon of choice. Um, here, and she, like, opens the cabinet and, and takes out this, this device, and uh, then she immediately turns around, points it at you, and thumbs it on, and a huge gout of flame explodes <laughs> straight in your direction. What do you do? Um, I have... Can I use escape on this, or is that just for being bound? Uh, that's just for being bound, yep. All right, well, I'm going to dodge out of the way. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use every little ounce of stuff that I have to do so. All right. What are, what are you using? Your spending uh, effort? Yeah. Do you have any advantage or, like, assets to... No, it's defense? an intellect, so no... Okay, so go ahead and uh, spend your effort and roll the dice. 
All Roll right. the dice. This poor, like, innocent Damn! man. <laughs> All right, Pocket. Uh, what minor effect do you want? Um. Oh, uh, well, this Here, is defense, I'll... so I don't. No, you get you get minor effects on, and major effects on uh, defensive actions as well. Okay, so. Um. Let's do. A. Uh, attack on a specific body part. Sure. Can I do her knees so I can take her down? Like, make her fall to the ground? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, also, so, you, you just sort of, like, sweep her knees out from under and she, like, hits the ground. She's not, like, flat on her back or anything. That works. But, yeah, you, like, tumble to the side and, like, what are you, like, hitting the back of her knee or kicking it or what? Yes, like, right, right in the back of the knee so she, she just falls down as quick yeah, as possible. Uh, she tumbles to the ground and the device falls out of her hand. Um, the curtains across the edge of the room have caught on fire and the room is quickly filling with billowing smoke. Um, uh, Amelia, downstairs, Jimes hears this as well. He hears this gout of flame. He hears screaming. He hears a huge thump. Uh, he starts seeing smoke like rise out of the uh, out of the upstairs window. He looks at you. He says, <laughs> "Damn it, woman!" And he like dashes inside. What do you do? Um, how high is the chimney stack? 